Hi, I'm Jane King, and this is New to the Street, in person back here at the NASDAQ market site in New York City. This show is all about public, private blockchain companies, the CEOs, the founders, and the innovators bringing you lots of opportunities to consider. Here we go. Rhonda Swan is the founder and CEO of Unstoppable Branding Agency, the host of Help Me Rhonda Show, international speaker, author, online brand strategist, and soon to be a regular feature on the Newsmax show, New to the Street, right? Unstoppable so, Women Entrepreneurs. Yes. So let's talk about let's talk <gasps> yeah. about the feature first, then yeah. we'll get into some of the other things. Yeah. So what do you envision like this will be? This well, will be? you know, I really believe that more women need the opportunity to share what they do in their story. You know, I was a ex-corporate executive that retired to become an entrepreneur 16 years ago because I didn't want to put my little girl in daycare. Mm -hmm. And what happened is I found that so many women were just, they weren't supporting each other, right? And so I think the more women can come together, support each other, the more growth we can have and the more financial wealth we can have in our families. Do you think that's improving, like, women entrepreneurs? I feel I like do. it is. I do. I, like, I do. Yeah. I think we've done a really good job with... Um, you know, women growing into the corporate office or women growing into becoming entrepreneurs. However, I think there's still that stigma. We still live in a society that says you're not necessarily good enough, you're not necessarily pretty enough, you have to, you know, be hard to make money. And I only say that because that was who I was. Yeah. You know, I thought I had to be this hard, you know, woman in order to make it in the corner office. And I've come to realize that, man, the more we as women support each other and grow, the better our families become, yeah. the better the wealth becomes, and the more conscious I think our, our world <laughs> becomes. Yeah. So what kind of stories do you think you might bring then to this regular feature? Yeah, well, I, you know, I um, am very big about women's financial literacy mm. because what happens with most businesses, not just women, is that they're just not financially resourced enough mm. or they fail more than they are su successful. And so what I want to do is bring in women that are not only educating on how to become more resourced, for our, um, helping women grow, get investments, helping their companies go public, helping them develop and reach other markets. Mm -hmm. I am a partner with She Trades, which is the United Nations She Trades, oh, uh -huh. three million women across the world that are in underdeveloped and developing countries, helping them connect to new markets. And so I think when we we take what we have in our resources and expand it, the world becomes better. And that's what I want to bring to the show. One thing I try to do is um, help women think about when they buy a product. You know, just think about like the business behind that product, yeah. the marketing of yes. it, and all that. And and I think with our daughters too, kind of explaining those things and asking them questions and making them think about well, why do you love this Disney Plus so much, and how right. do you think they make their money, and things like that. Just kind of start those. Well, it, it does. And it, when my daughter Hannah Lay's 15 now, when mm -hmm. she was 11, we asked her instead of what do you want to be when you grow up, we mm -hmm. said what do you want to be now. And this is at 11, mm -hmm. and, or actually she was seven at the time, and her eyes like lit up like, wait a minute, I can actually be something now? Mm -hmm. And it took her about three weeks, and she said, I got it, I want to be a fashion designer. Awesome. And yeah. we said, awesome. She mm -hmm. said, can I borrow $20? <laughs> and literally my daughter launched uh -huh. her first company at 11 years old, uh -huh. and she made her first six figures at 12. What? Because <laughs> she just knew she could do it. That's you know? amazing, yeah. But the, the more we can empower our girls or mm -hmm. our women right. to say, you can. And just get them used to you, thinking that get, way. That's yeah, right, right, right. That's yeah. it. Change the mind. Okay, so let's uh, finish with the book. So yeah. tell me about the book. And will that be kind of lessons from the book leading into the segment? Yeah, I think so. Many of the women from the book, the, the book's name is Women Gone Wild, mm -hmm. The Feminine Guide to Fearless Living. I take 25 women entrepreneurs and tell their story. And one of our uh, co-authors and the forward of the book was Diana Wentworth from Chicken Soup for the Soul. And she said, it's not what you've done, ladies. Mm -hmm. It's how you make them feel. And it changed the perspective on how women tell our stories, that you can tell the trials, the tribulations, the challenges, and still not look, be looked upon as weak, right. but be looked yeah. upon as, as you know, successful and really help our other, our women, our young girls thrive. And so 
the book is, is brilliant. We just launched it. We've been ranking on Amazon's top 2,000 books of all time for the last three weeks. We've got a beautiful billboard here in Times yeah. Square. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, and don't be afraid to take it. I love being an entrepreneur. So, warts and all. So, yeah, right? <laughs> it's exhausting, exhilarating, rewarding, <laughs> everything. So, I love All of the above. Rhonda, I look forward to these segments. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Thank okay. you so much. Uh -huh. Secure, the true solution for your digital privacy and security. Secure is a private and secure messaging and email solution hosted in Switzerland. Using proprietary military-grade encryption and Swiss privacy laws, giving you true privacy. Secure doesn't collect or sell your data and doesn't require your phone number or any personal data that hackers target. You can message and email non-secure users privately without the need for others to download Secure. Visit secure.com. Regain and protect your privacy today. Glint has developed proprietary technology that enables everyone to buy gold. Gold that's stored in Brinks vaults, insured by Lloyds of London. With Glint's app and debit card, peace of mind is just a few taps away. It's easy to protect your hard-earned savings, and there are no minimums, hidden fees, or financial advisors required. To learn how to safeguard your future, go to glintpay.com or download Glint from your favorite app store. Want to get linked to a really good investment? Everyone knows you have to be at the right place at the right time. So here's the deal. Link2 is that place. And when you sign up, you'll join an awesome community of investors with access to the world's leading private companies way before they go mainstream. Are you ready to get Link2? Our unicorns are waiting. Link2. Private investing made simple. offering peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. And with me to explain more about exactly how it works, I'm Mike Mimola, the Impact Ambassador uh, for Epic Cash. Great to see you again. Likewise. Um, so you're addressing inequalities, right, in the financial system. Uh, explain how it works. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, globally, not just in the financial system, but primarily that's the uh, direct impact that it has. Um, you know, depending on where you are born in the world, it has an obvious direct effect on your ability to participate in the global economy. So for throughout history, that's really been one of the most important deciding factors on how you can play in the global economy. Now with Epic, through cryptocurrency, we are democratizing the opportunity for everyone globally. Okay. And then you're working with gaming and PC yeah, companies. Yeah. so. How does that work? So, so with Epic, because of the technology, because of how small the actual blockchain is, 2.6 gigs, um, it operates on equipment that already exists. So for example, with a lot of other cryptocurrencies, you have to buy very expensive mining hardware. Um, tough to get sometimes, expensive, timely, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like, I want to go skiing, I have to get skis. I want to go golfing, I have to get golf. Already, two billion people have gaming computers and laptops, so we're changing the way they think. It's like, hey, I don't only have this computer to play games, but I can mine Epic Cash. I can make money with my computer. So we're changing the way people think about using their systems to bank. Yeah, and you're providing the base layer, yeah. right? So does that mean I could build a blockchain app, like a decentralized app? On How does that work? So Epic is one part. Yeah. Epic Cash is the digital currency, but it's one part of a, essentially, like a 12-part Lego system okay. for globe, for, to, to change the global monetary system. And there are a lot of different pieces that are, going, are being built on to it and with it and around it to allow people to do all kinds of incredible things. Not only transact me to send you Epic Cash or you to send me Epic Cash, but people to be able to ultimately take 0% interest loans against their own money and different things in ways that they've never been able wow. to do. Wow, so it's really going to shake things up. Changing everything. Yeah. yeah. Like when do you think we might live like this? Like when will this be mainstream? right now it's already mm -hmm. happening for the people that are paying attention mm -hmm. like yeah. with people that paid attention to bitcoin back in 2011 2012 earlier than that, yeah, yeah. things changed dramatically for them. But the technologies have advanced so much since then, and that's mm -hmm. what Epic has done. It stood on the shoulders of those giants that have come before it, 
and it's made improvements. And so for the people that are paying attention now, they can do incredible things. They can change the quality of their lives. And you know how it will affect your life obviously depends on you. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. Don't take my word for it. Go read the paperwork. Join the Telegram communities. Mm -hmm. Do do some investigation. Do your own research, yeah. as they say. And I think you'll see that it's really, really impressive. There is done. really a ton of information out there. Not all of it's good. No. But I think if you do read a lot of stuff, you start to kind of get a sense of what's legit and what's not, how everything works. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I got into crypto in 2017, more mm -hmm. or less. Mm -hmm. I bought a lot. Um, a lot of different projects I've been involved in. But this is the only one where I'm sitting here with you talking about it publicly because I've done the research and I believe in it. And the people that are in the community, which is an extraordinary global community, are like-hearted, like-minded, and understand the real global impact that we can have on humanity by using this technology. Yeah. Talk to me about that, like the macro sense. I mean, how do you envision Epic Cash changing the world or changing the lives of somebody who otherwise wouldn't have the experience this? Yeah, I could literally tear up when I think about yeah. it. It's that profound. Yeah, yeah. There are 1.8 billion unbanked people, mm -hmm. and banking in many ways has been a good old boys club for a long time. Mm -hmm. And depending on who you are and where you are, you either have access to that or you don't. And many people don't. And they never will have access to the banking system because they don't have identification. They don't, they're not able to provide the things that you need. With Epic Cash, we are providing a solution for people, 1.8 billion people that are unbanked, that can now not only start transacting business, but can start mining from their laptops or from their gaming computers very, very soon from their mobile devices around the world. Yeah. And so think about the change that that can have if we can help people enter into a system that they have throughout history been excluded from. Right, and be economically independent. And yeah, absolutely. And, and it's not just them. I mean, it's it, it's obviously the unbanked, but it's depending on where you are in different countries. Mm -hmm. There are dictatorships that allow or don't allow certain things. Yes. They allow people to do or not do certain things. This is the... the, the like or I control said, the, your accounts. Control your yes. accounts. Mm -hmm. Censor your accounts. Yeah. You can do this. You can't do right. this. You and donated money to this thing. So we're <laughs> that is, you know, that's... It's actually that, happening. <laughs> that, you know, the privacy yeah. features of Epic okay. eliminate that. And yeah. that's what's really important. Like you said, how... How is that fair? Fundamentally, on a human level, if, if somebody donates $25 because they believe in something and the next day go to the bank and your bank account's frozen, Jane, sorry, and your credit card's no good, so you can't put gas in your car to take your son to school. That isn't the intention of money, the way that we think That's of it, right. it's in its ability to help yeah, each other. No, it's kind of terrifying what we've seen happen. Um, so finally, where does Epic go from here? Everywhere. <laughs> it, it already is. You know, it's. We are in um, over 120 countries, in over 2,000 cities. More and more people are using it. More and more people, um, retailers are starting to use it. People are buying things with Epic Cash. And it just goes everywhere. I mean, we really have the ability to touch every human being that has access to a phone, a laptop, a computer, and not only give them that ab ability, but to teach them how to do it. And mm -hmm. so that's profound. And you start how? How do you get started? By doing this, by talking about it, okay. explaining to people. And okay. downloading the wallet or? Yep. Okay. You can download the wallet. You can go, one of the great, you know, there's an amazing Telegram channel for mm -hmm. Epic Cash, the Epic Cash community. People can go on the Telegram. Mm -hmm. They can go to epic.tech. Okay. It has all of the information that they'll need and start talking to people. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you, Jane. Okay. Secure, the true solution for your digital privacy and security. Secure is a private and secure messaging and email solution hosted in Switzerland, using proprietary military-grade encryption and Swiss privacy laws, giving you true privacy. Secure doesn't collect or sell your data and doesn't require your phone number or any personal data that hackers target. You can message and email non-secure users privately without the need for others to download Secure. Visit secure.com. Regain and protect your privacy today. Glint has developed proprietary technology that enables everyone to buy gold. Gold that's stored in Brinks vaults, insured by Lloyds of London. With Glint's app and debit card, peace of mind is just a few taps away. It's easy to protect your hard-earned savings, and there are no minimums, hidden fees, or financial advisors required. To learn how to safeguard your future, go to glintpay.com or download Glint from your favorite app store. Want to get linked to a really good investment? Everyone knows you have to be at the right place at the right time. So here's the deal. Link2 is that place. 
and when you sign up, you'll join an awesome community of investors with access to the world's leading private companies way before they go mainstream. Are you ready to get linked to? Our unicorns are waiting. Link to private investing made simple. Verde Bio Holdings is a mineral acquisition management company with acquisition experience in several different parts of the U.S. And with me is the CEO, Scott Cox, to talk about this very unique business model. So just start with what the company is all about. Well, first off, thank you for having me. So Verde Bio is first and foremost an oil and gas company, but we've got a unique business plan where we acquire minerals and the associated royalties under producing wells across the various basins of the United States. And our goal is to build a really nice balanced portfolio of natural gas and oil at good prices. Mm -hmm. And this is a very unique business model. I didn't even know this business existed, that you could buy the minerals. So another oil company, a driller yes. or explorer or whatever, mm -hmm. takes over that land and then you come in and... Yeah, well, what we like to think of it as is, is shared reserves but not expenses. So when they come in and drill on our minerals, we have no costs associated with that well. We simply get the mailbox money later on after it's producing. Yeah, so there are some other uh, companies in this space. I'm not super aware with them. Tell me about the competitors who's in this. So typically, uh, we don't have a lot of competition where we are right now. There are much larger companies that do the, what we do, mm -hmm. however, we are unique in that we kind of have a grassroots efforts when it comes to acquiring these things. We, we, we like to acquire, if we can, straight from the landowner. And therefore, when, when we compare it against the much larger companies, they have a large investment thesis where they can't look at things you know, below a certain amount per month. Well, we think of ourselves as an aggregator where we'll basically look at anything as far as size goes. And, and if it will help the portfolio and it adds value, we don't really care what size it is. Mm -hmm. And so we're not, the, the key differentiator there is that we're not controlled by a strict investment thesis. Okay, and of course, I'm sure you're well aware, energy, yes. fossil fuels has been, I think maybe the only sector of the economy that's done well this year. Yes. I mean, explain, like you're in the industry, what do you see, you have benefited from that, I assume? Yes, so because of, of what we own, we actually get the benefit of the rise in commodity prices without any additional expense to mm -hmm. the company. So if, if we were, uh, you know, our checks that we receive have gone up proportionately with the markets. I do believe that, um, I, don't, you know, I don't think it's sustainable at these prices. Mm -hmm. I think they'll come down, um, but ultimately, Yes, we, we, like, we like the rise in the prices. It's yeah. not good for the overall economy, but it's good for us as a company. Um, and it does stimulate growth and development mm -hmm. in our properties. Right now, we've got, you know, we've received notice of over 18 new wells being drilled mm -hmm. um, and, and another 15 being brought online soon. And so, you know, we, we do value the, the, the rise in it. And it's ultimately kind of the, what we've, what we hope for in the cycles of our investments. Yeah. So that's really interesting because people are drilling more because of the prices. There's an incentive yes. now to do that. There is. Does that help with acquisitions? It makes it a little tougher on acquisitions. Oh, really? So because the prices are higher, um, the demand gets, gets more for these types of deals. Um, and so we've got to be a little more picky, a little more careful in what we buy. We might, we might not um, take a lot of deals that we normally would in a low priced environment. Because you know, when we look at things at these types of prices, we're we're buying at basically the top. Mm -hmm. So we've got to make sure that you've got a good active operator, well-funded operator, and that there's essentially some growth and development to continue on it. Otherwise, you're buying a dying price. Interesting. So um, talk to me about the acquisitions you have made and future acquisitions that you're looking at. So to date, we've made, I believe, 18 different acquisitions across uh, seven states in all of the major um, basins. Okay. Uh, we've got stuff in the Marcellus and the Utica, the Haynesville Shale, the DJ Basin of Colorado, um, 
the Permian Basin of Texas, um, and, and just kind of all over the place. And ultimately, we're, like I said before, we're, our goal is to build a nice balanced portfolio mm -hmm. of, of good producing assets. And we're gonna continue to make those acquisitions. Mm -hmm. We're not finished. Uh, we're gonna continue to grow the company and, and build a portfolio as uh, opportunistically as we can. And we're gonna manage that portfolio. And that's, that's another differentiator with us is that we don't have any prescribed hold times on these things. If we have an asset that's not doing well, We'll divest it and reinvest the money. Okay, and um, also some of your effort is being going into marketing, so which is what brought you here today yes, uh, yes. for uh, New to the Street and also investment relations. So talk about that part of the business. Yes, yeah, so you know we, our goal is to really get the story out there, mm -hmm. and like you said, a lot of people don't even know that this subsector exists in the oil and gas mm -hmm. markets, and so we we found it difficult to really get the the story out to people and let them understand that they can be in, in oil and gas, but they don't have to be with an operator. They can have exposure to those markets without exposure to huge debts and things like that in these, in these massive companies. And so, you know, that's, that's our key is that we want to we want to get the story out that we are an oil and gas company, but we're a very low risk oil and gas company. And ultimately, build a good shareholder base and continue to grow the company. Mm -hmm. And talk about your growth plan. Is there a chance for an uplisting? Yes, we are exploring an, an uplisting. We believe that, uh, that that's the way that we can truly unlock the value mm -hmm. in the company and the stock. And I think it will continue just to open up more opportunities for the company. Yeah, okay, Scott, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Want to get linked to a really good investment? Everyone knows you have to be at the right place at the right time. So here's the deal. Link2 is that place. And when you sign up, you'll join an awesome community of investors with access to the world's leading private companies way before they go mainstream. Are you ready to get Link2? Our unicorns are waiting. Link2. Private investing made simple. Secure, the true solution for your digital privacy and security. Secure is a private and secure messaging and email solution hosted in Switzerland. Using proprietary military-grade encryption and Swiss privacy laws, giving you true privacy. Secure doesn't collect or sell your data and doesn't require your phone number or any personal data that hackers target. You can message and email non-secure users privately without the need for others to download Secure. Visit secure.com. Regain and protect your privacy today. Secure private data offers secure instant messaging systems, emails, some other things for business as well as individuals. So with me is CEO Alang Yahi uh, to talk about that, what you're offering, and then also I want to talk about, I was reading an article this week, Microsoft said that uh, Russia has stepped up attacks on allies of Ukraine. Uh, Company or countries who have supplied them, particularly NATO countries, with the U.S. getting bombarded the most. Yes. It sounded like. So I mean, that's that's the kind of things that we're seeing. Like this is like international economic cyber war. It totally right. is. And Russia, mm -hmm. it's not the first time that right. it happens. Now it's mm -hmm. overtly open. So I would say in the in the case of Russia right now, it's more uh, it's it's a warfare. It's political. Uh, China has been hacking the U.S. There's a rumor that they have the database of every citizen mm -hmm. and their social security. That's more economic, mm -hmm. uh, siphoning all the trillions of dollars of R&D that America spends and people like you with your tax money mm -hmm. is being spent. The Chinese siphon it wow. and then they make copies because that's how hacking is not just to hack. It's always for an economic gain. Okay. In the case of Russia, it's a threat and mm -hmm. it does wreak havoc. For example, if there's a hack on an electricity uh, plant, I mean a huge power plant, if there's a hack on military installations, uh, if there's a hack in banks, we just talked about banks uh, not too long ago, 
All they need to do is hack uh, the stock exchange right here. Mm -hmm. The bastion of capitalism, if there's a system error on the New York Stock Exchange that makes the Dow go down 10,000 points, what do you think that will happen? This is all about destabilizing okay. from remote control. And this is going to happen more and more and more. I mean, Iran does that too, mm -hmm. right? All the fun states that you want to go visit in the summer, basically. Yeah. So, you know, you definitely <laughs> don't want to go into those all the hot <laughs> vacation spots. So this is nonstop, and it's going to increase. It's, it's amazing, actually, that we haven't had a more serious attack, I feel like. Like, that we've been able to protect our financial system and our uh, power system. And I mean, it's, you know, a credit to the people that work in cybersecurity for that. Absolutely, because <laughs> there's a lot of hacks that happen every day that we won't hear about. Mm -hmm. We only hear about the ones that <laughs> fail that are very big. But I would, I would say financial hacking is massive mm -hmm. uh, because you have credit card companies, banks. I mean, this is like livelihood of people. And then you have more critical like infrastructure mm -hmm. hacks, which happened, or the beef processing plant, you know. So yes, if Russia openly <laughs> says we're gonna hack everybody that helps Ukraine, um, they probably already have been doing it and now it's just mm -hmm. an open warfare. I still have confidence in the U.S. government and the capability of the U.S. intelligence and the, the talent that you have in the yeah. U.S. and the power. So I'm, I'm confident that there's going to be some protection. Yeah. But you just can't let your guard down. And I would recommend even as a small business, mm -hmm. because here we're talking about rogue states and, and international cyber attack and terrorism. But small businesses that are 98% of the U.S. economy mm -hmm. need to take this thing seriously. You know, a lot of people say, but I have nothing to hide. It's not about hiding. Right. It's about protecting your data. IBM came in a study, I think a year ago, mm -hmm. that when a small business gets mm -hmm. hacked, they have an average five to seven million dollars of real and, and other losses. They lose clients, etc. So we all need to kind of step up to the plate, um, use proper communication tool, double check and reduce the footprint in social media I always say that wow so important um, so we're entering a political season and you typically do see hacks step up during this time like how does that look it's people. funny because Newsmax on the American Agenda asked me that uh, the other day and we talked about it political is massive I and mean, it engages the whole country so it's not the first time that a political party uses uh, technology to hack the other. Uh, this will increase. So you have domestic hacking and spying because they're going to spy on the conversations because that's intelligence to see what the other guy's thinking, the other party's thinking. And then you have international cyber terrorism and cyber hack to just disrupt the political process to influence one outcome over another. I think we learned from the 2020 elections and I think people are smarter. I definitely don't believe anything that you see on social media today when it comes to politics. And in terms of uh, my recommendation to all the political parties and candidates, you know, take a look at your email infrastructure. Take a look at how you chat and you text. And yes, I'm going to say it. Look at our company, Secure, secure.com, S-E-K-U-R, because we have a messaging application that lets you message even to people who don't have the application. Yeah. And it's cheap. I mean, it's, it's like $5 a month. And I think for political candidates and all of their volunteers <laughs> that use, you know, Gmail and WhatsApp all the time, I would recommend to scale back on those kind of things because you're going to repeat the same mistakes that happened in the previous two elections. Well, and we just had the Supreme Court overturn Roe versus Wade. Highly emotional topic. A lot of interest in it. That would be something I could see a hacker, um, you know, taking advantage of somebody's emotion to get information about something like that. So watch for any kind of emails. Yeah, that's an excellent point because we are emotional people, we're human, so we're reactive. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get, whether you're pro or against abortion, you'll get an email with a title. And how do they know that? Again, it goes back social to media. social media. Mm -hmm. They know if you lie, if you're pro or, or against. And they'll manipulate with email, and then they'll be read this article about blah blah, whatever subject you're interested right, in. Right. And you click you're going to click on it, and you can say goodbye, done. Charlie, to right. all your data, <laughs> all your credit card, and oh. your contacts. Because oh. if it's on the oh. phone and you're using one of those uh, free application, like all of them, like the, the messengers that we all know, 
they all synchronize your contacts. That's another thing we don't do. We don't even ask for your phone number when you register with us. So not only you, but all your contacts and their contacts, mm -hmm. because machines know who has what subject in mind because of the social media. So be careful and, you know, just be vigilant out there. Thank you so much, Alon. With Always pleasure. Always great advice. Thank, thank you thank so you. much. Glint has developed proprietary technology that enables everyone to buy gold. Gold that's stored in Brinks vaults, insured by Lloyds of London. With Glint's app and debit card, peace of mind is just a few taps away. It's easy to protect your hard-earned savings, and there are no minimums, hidden fees, or financial advisors required. To learn how to safeguard your future, go to glintpay.com or download Glint from your favorite app store. James Haft is an investor and an expert in the blockchain industry and also the founder of Crypto Mondays, which I've been to a few times. Yeah. And uh, James, good to see you again. Uh, you so we've much. been friends for years. Um, so let's just talk about the blockchain industry and how you see it right now. It's mm -hmm. been, I feel like there's been super fast growth. Mm -hmm. We've had kind of a rough patch this year. What's your take on the industry right now? Um, well, you know, the block, it's very interesting. The blockchain is not the technology that's changing the world. What's happening is that we as humanity need a change. We need to decentralize. We need to start to have peer-to-peer -peer relationships. Politics are not working and the economy isn't working. You know, uh, education system is not working. The economy is not working. All these things, we know it. Uh, and people are trying to figure out. And we know doing more of the same is not the answer. That's, you know, uh, and so I think that what's happened is we're looking for a way to break around and break through these formats, these templates that we have that where would you keep pushing the same button and we don't get the result. And so the idea is how do I start to deal with people individually? How do I stop depending on these people that I know are not dependable for me, the centralized authorities? And so blockchain and distributed ledger technology enable you to have permissionless transactions where you don't need trust because you have truth without trusting in blockchains that offer transparent access to information. Mm -hmm. uh, so you no longer need to get the, the opinion of another person. Right. Well, and I totally agree with you, but I feel like maybe the technology isn't there yet or maybe the education isn't there yet for this to really be mass adoption. So what, what needs to happen for that we see this mainstream? So, um, great question. <laughs> um, you know, this focus on mass adoption is kind of like a distraction. Mm. Uh, the technology is not where it's going to be in 10 years, it's just where it is today. And that doesn't mean that it's far enough or not far enough, it just is a fact of where, where, where it is. Uh, and it's certainly robust enough to enact to change for us. Uh, scalability uh, is an issue in terms of, of, because all of a sudden instead of accessing people on your block or within your community or within your country, now you're automatically instantaneously addressing the world. Right? And so that's scale, that, that degree of scalability is not just technical, it's cultural, it's linguistic, uh, it, it's legal. And so there's all these different things that you need to break through to get to scalability. Um, if you look at how blockchain is being adopted, it's being adopted much faster than the internet was adopted in the 1990s. And remember how breaking that, that was. Yeah. Uh, but, and you also have to add that to the concept that everyone thinks that we are far along or that, that Blockchain has already happened, yeah. and the truth is, we're in the oh, bottom of the first close. inning. We're yeah. the bottom of the first <laughs> inning. There isn't really right. even a killer app yet right. uh, that uses the technology, and, and everyone knows it's not the technology that drives the adoption. It's the killer apps. That's what we learned from iPhones, mm. and you know, from, and from Steve Jobs. Where's the killer app? Right. That's uh, and, really what brought the. The, the, kill, apps. the killer app was Excel and Microsoft Word for the computer, right? The killer app was e-commerce, was, was, was credit cards and getting, getting through transactions. You know, the killer app, you know, for cell phone, for, for wireless communications was the cell phone network. So we need to have a killer app, which we don't really have yet. Yeah. Do you have any idea what that killer app might be? Um, I think actually the, the one that's, that in my mind is going to be social media. Mm. I think this idea of how our social media is controlled and abused by governments and by individuals and, and by states uh, is unacceptable and I think that we're understanding it's leading us down the wrong path. So, so core to the, to the ethos uh, in, the, in the distributed ledger world and the blockchain world is that you have to own your own identity, you have to own your own 
uh, value and you have to own your own information, you have to own your own relationships. Yeah. And so until we have that level of self-sovereignty, we're not going to be able to reverse the trends that are happening. And I think that a cryptographically protected uh, distributed ledger social media platform will, will come about that will start to uh, be Maybe the first killer app. Elon Musk will do this with Twitter. No, we know he's a doge. Don't get me started. No. Okay. We, well, we'll talk. If, if, if Elon Musk <laughs> is the answer, we are in so oh, much no? trouble. Oh, <laughs> okay. exactly. no. Well, let's talk about DLTX. Sure. So you, um, that's your company. Mm -hmm. Tell me what, because you're really working on this kind of technology, yes. right? So um, I founded a company with some partners uh, to uh, basically build the infrastructure, the networks that are required to support permissionless uh, D3 decentralized uh, Web3 mm -hmm. decentralized transactions, mm -hmm. uh, because you need to have you need to have the actual bandwidth, computing power, storage space, uh, and connectivity in order to, uh, that are that are decentralized and permissionless in order to have these future platforms which will enable us to behave on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. Yeah. And so we're focused at DLTX on currency, which is Bitcoin. Um, on, uh, on storage, which is Filecoin, um, on Relay, which is how your information moves around the internet on a, a network called Pocket Network. And we're about to announce that we have a DY or a, or a decentralized wireless division, which is going to start to focus on Helium and certain other similar type uh, oh. platforms. So the idea is that we will have a stack of of networks that will that will grow as decentralized transactions grow over time, and in all different kinds of industries too. So, right. Well, be, be, because we, because we know that you're going to need the that, that that when you we don't care which DAP wins. We don't care which one is the killer app. We just know that when these apps come along, they're going to need decentralized wire, uh, connectivity. They're going to need decentralized routing. They're going to need decentralized storage. Right. And by de decentralized, what I mean is permissionless systems where the founder, where the creator of the content maintains ownership and has determination about who can see it and who can use it and who benefits from it and how the value of that system is shared with the participants in the network. Yeah. Now, the exciting part is you're going to be bringing some of these companies uh, to new to the street uh, to the show on Newsmax and Fox Business and Bloomberg um, and uh, we're going to help educate the world about blockchain it's, and what you're doing. So, yeah, I, I'm lucky enough to have uh, roots in the past with the founders of New to the Street and uh, we're going to have a, uh, I think, a series, we're not sure what, what the regularity is, but, but a series recurring over time where I'm going to bring blockchain and D DLT companies to you uh, and that will sit and talk and be able to do it from an educational perspective so people can see under the hood what's happening. Because what's happening now is it's already significant, it's already happening, we just don't realize it yet. Humanity doesn't realize things are happening until after it's over. Right. And so I'd like to show under the hood a little bit how the sausage is made so that people can understand where the opportunity are. No, I think I think that's awesome, and the more that we can tell people about it and let them know of some of these up-and-coming companies mm -hmm. and educate them on the whole industry, I think mm -hmm. it's a great idea. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you so much, James. Okay. Okay. Secure, the true solution for your digital privacy and security. Secure is a private and secure messaging and email solution hosted in Switzerland using proprietary military-grade encryption and Swiss privacy laws, giving you true privacy. Secure doesn't collect or sell your data and doesn't require your phone number or any personal data that hackers target. You can message and email non-secure users privately without the need for others to download Secure. Visit secure.com. Regain and protect your privacy today. is an all-in-one payment solution where you can pay in crypto or fiat. You can do a bunch of other stuff with the app as well. And with me is the CEO, Neil Sarant Ortiz, to explain Paypolitan, the latest developments uh, you have with the company as well. So let's just start with, let's start with the latest developments and then we'll talk a little bit more about exactly what it is that Paypolitan is all about. Yeah. So let's start with that. First of all, thank you. Thank you for having yeah, me again. Yeah, it's good to have you here. And, uh, what happened to Nasdaq? I know. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. So today we're at the New York Stock Exchange, mm -hmm. Wall Street. So uh, it's an honor to be here. And um, yeah, latest developments of uh, PayPal are pretty good. So we are just uh, uh, hitting 250,000 users. Okay. I think that is uh, uh, achievement. Yeah. 
Um, and people get, are using it to pay for things? Um, they mostly use it for the crypto part okay. as of today. Uh -huh. uh, to be honest, uh, uh, DeFi and staking is the most used uh, feature so far. But now that we released uh, the credit tool, I think they're going to be shift uh, to uh, the, the crypto loans, the peer-to-peer -peer loans we just launched. So um, Is that the white label? Uh, no, that's not the white okay. label. That, that that is the part we we just uh, recently launched, so uh, people can uh, get a P two P loan from other uh, holders and users in crypto. So we have seventeen uh, cryptocurrencies available, and you use our EPEN token as a collateral. Okay, so that's the loan part. Exactly. And tell me about the white label that you just launched. Yeah, the white label. <clears throat> we just. Um, launch a major um, customer. By the way, when we met in Dubai, uh, we just signed the contract there. Okay. Uh, it was Metabank, actually. Now I can say the name. Uh, Metabank is uh, a bank in the metaverse, and they purchased our PayPal solution as a white label. Wow. And um, they launched uh, a few days ago. They're doing pretty well. Already 10,000 users so far, uh, uh, I know. And uh, for us, it's a very good showcase. Uh, so uh, we already have other showcases, but we're not allowed to uh, communicate about them. So uh, that is a very nice showcase because people can see what we're able to do at Pipot. So other explain customers. how this works. I want to open an account at MetaBank yes. in the Metaverse. I can do that, and then I use PayPal and uh, the EPAN tokens. How does it work exactly? So <clears throat> you don't use the EPAN token. They have their own token, the Meta okay. X token. Okay. And once again, <clears throat> you don't open a bank account. So you're opening a user account, and you connect your existing bank accounts to the app. And what's different uh, compared to PayPal and with MetaBank is they do have a credit card, a labeled credit card which you simply put into the app, and that one you can then add to Google Pay or to Apple Pay. Okay, interesting. But what are your next milestones? So next milestone is gonna be um, making PayPal ready for capital market listing. That is uh, loads of work. That's also the reason why I'm here in New York uh, those days here, uh, negotiating and discussing, because of course, uh, since the beginning of the year and the recent events, the market is not easy to say, but even difficult markets, there's always an opportunity for a company like Peppolitan yeah. uh, to get a benefit out of that. So what about this crypto <laughs> winner? And I mean, how, how do you think how long it will last? I mean, how will we come out of this and what will things look like? Well, I don't have the crystal ball of, uh, <clears throat> of right. course, as, as I always say, uh, answering to that question. But I think to avoid the next stable coin, because stable coin is supposed to be like a, a, a safe haven uh, in the crypto world uh, would tumble, namely Tether. I think Tether has simply uh, uh, to prove that their uh, uh, coin is backed by assets and US dollars. Yeah. And not like some claims that might be uh, uh, put in the books with 100%, but a claim could be like 10% close to nothing, uh, who knows. Um, that sh simply has to be transparent. I mean, uh, the crypto world is also evolving. It's a more mature market right now. And I think there's no reason to hide away, um, give it back the transparency it needs. Mm. So that is the homework to be done. I cannot do that. I hope the market uh, will push them to do that homework. Mm. And um, great overall, I am confident. We have been to different times in the past and the market is always recovering. And I think crypto is established as a virtual, as a alternative asset class. Yeah. That is for sure. I mean, if you look at inflation, uh, um, that, that is, is, is not from the table. And what is unfortunately not true is that the crypto market is not disconnected from real economy. Right. When there is inflation, there are bad numbers on, on uh, uh, U.S. economy that is having an immediate impact on the crypto market as well. Yeah, well, crypto and stocks all went down together. So exactly. they're all connected. So thank you so much, Nils. Great thank to you. see you here in New York. Thank you very okay, much. Thanks. Want to get linked to a really good investment? Everyone knows you have to be at the right place at the right time. So here's the deal. Link2 is that place. 
and when you sign up, you'll join an awesome community of investors with access to the world's leading private companies way before they go mainstream. Are you ready to get linked to? Our unicorns are waiting. Link to. Private investing made simple. I'm joined today by Susan Miller, the Chief Growth Officer at Link2, and also Lisa Carmen Wang, the founder of Bad Bitch Empire, unapologetic feminist. Susan and Lisa join us to share insight on women investors. That's really like what you're trying to do, right, is get more women in private equity. Um, so let's start. So you're hosting an event. Susan, you want to tell me about that and why you decided to do that? So Link2 launched an initiative for women investors, um, and we're collaborating with some of our favorite influencers like Lisa. Uh, and what we found was not only is private equity not democratized, mm -hmm. but specifically gender inequity. It's, it should be private inequity, I suppose. Um, but specifically, there aren't that many women investors. No, there aren't. Yeah. So if 90% of private equity investors are men, um, that was one of the things. So Lisa and I have been collaborating on, well, why is that? And what can we do to help empower women? Yeah. And so Lisa, why did you join the initiative? Well, investing is the most powerful generator of wealth, and women simply are not participating at the same rates as men. You know, we're less than 15% of venture capitalists and angel investors and 15% of crypto investors. And we've seen that a big part of it has to do with education and the way women are spoken to about investing, where 90% of money articles targeted at women are negative about saving or spending less. And it's the exact opposite for men where 90% of those articles are about investing in opportunity and growth. And the result is that 65% of women are uncomfortable making investment decisions, but it's because it's a boys club. And so both of us were really passionate about making sure that the language and the, the safety and feeling of investing is actually there because it is the, the way we are going to generate unapologetic worth and yeah. wealth. You know, I'll tell you a funny story. So I had actually called uh, my stockbroker and asked about investing in a, in a European company. And he said, he's, um, and this is like just a random guy that answered me. And he said, did your husband tell you about this? <laughs> and I was like, dude, if you only knew what I did. But anyway, it's just a funny story that I share from time to time. So why is now a good time to focus on something like this? So more women than ever before are actually interested in alternate investments. And we saw during the pandemic that more than 50% of women increased their bank accounts, their flexibility, their liquidity, their ability to make investments. Um, and one of the challenges is that they just haven't had access. So they haven't had access to the financial information, the literacy, the empowerment, but also the ability to make investments. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one of the reasons that Link2 is really passionate yeah. behind the movement. And Lisa, what advice would you give to women? My best piece of advice is really you are smart enough and good enough to be an investor. Every woman has that capacity within her. And don't let the jargon or uh, any of the, the complicated terms that people are putting around this deter you from actually investing your money and making your money work for you. And I think the more we build community, the more women see other women who look like them, who sound like them, um, really taking charge of their assets, I think we're really going to start to see the collective power of women making their money work together to invest in innovative female founders, right? new types of companies that can actually benefit women and the world. And Susan, just finally, what's next for Link2 and women, uh, your, your initiative there? Well, um, we are collaborating with folks like Lisa. Uh, we're both entrepreneurs. This is my fourth startup. Um, Lisa invests in female founders using her fund um, and is an entrepreneur herself. Uh, and you know, we're, we're, there are many different ways that women have come to feel financially savvy and financially confident. Um, and one of them is the education and, and kind of demystifying some of those terms, mm -hmm. uh, explaining you know, uh, crypto 101 or what are our options or um, 
what is an NFT? Is it something I should invest in? And, and helping me understand, uh, in addition to just strategies and yeah. thinking about your, your portfolio. So uh, over the course of the next year, we are doing a monthly segment. We just hosted our last one, or our first one last week, mm -hmm. um, and had a phenomenal uh, participation. So we'll be doing that across the course of the coming year. Uh, and we invite men and women, our allies, women. Uh, you don't have to be accredited to participate. Okay. Um, and how do they find out about where they can watch that or attend or whatever. So we'll share information through link2.com. Okay. So it's linqto.com. Um, and uh, you can find it on our YouTube. You can find it on our website. Awesome. Thank you so much, Susan and Lisa, for joining me. Thanks. Secure, the true solution for your digital privacy and security. Secure is a private and secure messaging and email solution hosted in Switzerland using proprietary military-grade encryption and Swiss privacy laws, giving you true privacy. Secure doesn't collect or sell your data and doesn't require your phone number or any personal data that hackers target. You can message and email non-secure users privately without the need for others to download Secure. Visit secure.com. Regain and protect your privacy today. to the Secure Privacy and Security segment. I'm Anna Berry, along with Elaine Guy, the CEO of Secure Private Data. Welcome back, Elaine. Hi, Anna. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. All right, so last week we spoke about the ex-Amazon cloud worker convicted of that massive hack about 100 million customers' data, um, dealing with cryptocurrency, identity theft, whatnot. So let's talk about identity theft protection. There are companies out there like Aura and LifeLock that claim to help protect your identity. Uh, what should we know about them and what should we be aware of? You know, identity theft protection, it's, there's many ways you can do it. You know, the first way is at least reduce your social media footprint. And we'll discuss many ways, but companies like LifeLock, which I have started way back, I mean, at the beginning, uh, the, they claim that nobody can steal your identity and somebody hacked them and posted the CEO's social security and ID on a huge billboard. I think it was in New York, which was kind of funny. I know people in the business really well. We've always thought this is a pretty attractive business to bundle with our secure communication tool. We're looking into it. We already registered the, the domain and the trademark of secure identity. But identity, uh, like, like Aura and LifeLock, they all have the same thing. So they'll charge you. Aura, I know this is cheap. I mean, I forget about LifeLock. They may start at nine bucks. They got bought by Norton. I was going to say, they're just like antivirus. So kind of useless in most of the cases. Uh, because antiviruses are always after the fact. And half the time, they slow down your computers. So, and they bug you, they have 50 things. And antivirus is one of the biggest profit margin you can get. And Norton, I think, is the one who bought LifeLock. So they all have that $1 million insurance, which means that if you're being hacked, your identity basically stolen, not the hack, but let's say your identity, they will reimburse up to a million. Well, there's been a study that's done that LifeLock, the most they paid out was 2,500 bucks. Or the most money they spent, I think, and pay, uh, spent. So they said they'll spend up to X amount to recover your identity. So it's a lot of gimmick, a lot of marketing. I don't know Aura really well because it's it's fairly new. Uh, but they have like identity guard. Uh, they got you know your credit, and it starts at twelve bucks a month. And you think, okay, it's cheap, you know. And they have a million dollar insurance and sixty day money back guarantee. These are very profitable business. The only thing that costs money is really the marketing because there's competition. And then you got to repeat to people. We looked at this kind of business. We may do it sometime next year, second half, after we finish our browser. And if we do, it will be complimentary and it will have our email as well because none of these guys offer a private and secure email with it. So the idea for us is to increase our brand, 
to gain the trust of our customer. And then if there's something of value that we can provide, like a really good identity theft protection kit, we'll launch that as well. The thing that we do is on our email, for example, we have this secure send feature. You can send an email to anybody outside of the secure network and you're still guaranteed for you and the recipient privacy and security. You know, you can go to secure.com and go to our support or tutorials and you can watch these little videos. It'll show you how it's done. Um, having less social media footprint and using an email that doesn't data mine you, that's a great start because all the other emails data mine you. So when they data mine you, what happens is A, what do they do? They resell your stuff, which is really your identity. So on one hand, you're gonna pay 20 bucks to a company that's probably hosted on Amazon for all we know, and uh, to protect you from a company that you use the email that's data mining you every day and selling your very identity. So there is a conflict of, it's an oxymoron in a way, right? But all you know is that you keep paying these guys. So what we do is we never data mine you. We protect you and your recipient with our secure send features, secure reply. When it comes to Messenger, which is the big one, so everybody uses these free application uh, that data mine the heck out of you. They make money. I mean, advertising is the biggest gain of these companies. At least when you use secure Messenger, you won't have that problem. And the other big thing is your identity starts with a few things, your phone number, your email, your footprint. With us, we never ask for your phone number. So at the very least, somebody who's trying to steal your identity and it starts with your phone number, they get into your phone from the WhatsApp, the signal or the text or whatever, they have everything after that. They got probably your store credit card, they got your photos, your addresses, everything you own. With us, you don't have a phone number when you do messengers back and forth. So we try to improve, right? There's no foolproof, but these are the steps that we do. Like you said, it's a lifestyle change. And if and when we launch an identity theft prevention tool, it's gonna to be a good one. These guys are all the same, and you can kind of recognize they have the same $1 million policy, the same blah, blah. I have, um, we have a partner in the US that sells our email package as part of a protection. Great company. For half a decade, we've been together since 2012, actually. So that's a full decade, actually. Yeah. Need to know how to count now. So <laughs> a full decade. And he told me it cost him 50 cents just for the package. So the million dollar insurance, which sounds super impressive, cost them maybe a couple bucks at most, right? right? So they sell it for 12 or more but they spend a lot of money in advertising. So I'm not saying don't buy the product. I'm just saying don't count 100% on that. That may be a great start so that you know you've been compromised, but they're just like antiviruses, outdated. Right, yeah, if you don't change the way you do business, nothing else is gonna change. So feel free to buy yeah. the products, but don't send an email with valuable information out there on the open source, at, at least. I have started to follow this advice and I'm sure lots of our viewers have as well. I actually have to open a new bank account tomorrow and I'll be using my secure mail. So as always, thank you for all that you're doing, informing the public um, to keep our data private and secure. Thanks for joining us again, Elaine. Thanks, Sana, and thanks everyone for watching. If you're interested to look at Secure, go to secure.com. You can use a promo code SECURE15, S-E-K-U-R-1-5, and we'll get you 15% off a whole year of service. Or, you know, check us out and, you know, here on New to the Street on the Secure segment. And uh, we're always there to try to give you some good tips on trying to beat the hackers. Good luck. Beat the hackers. Good luck. Thanks, Elaine.